Emmy Award winner Pierre Maguire of NBC Sports right here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Pierre? I'm doing very well, Rich. Thanks for having me. You bet. So uh, I, I don't think, obviously, Ranger fans would have signed for a win. They didn't see this one coming. Did you see this coming? 7-3? No. No, sir. Nobody saw that coming, Rich. No, not a chance. Uh, just it's a weird kind of a series that way. We've had tight games. We've had blowout games. We've had middle-of-the-road games. We had an overtime game. I mean, we've had a lot of different stuff in this game, but the, or this series. But the one thing we have had, in every game is speed, Rich. It's really been a track meet kind of a series, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's become so interesting to watch. So what to make of these two teams coming in? As you said, they're all over the map. Uh, one, one minute, Lundquist has given up uh, six goals in back-to-back -back games, and now here the Rangers like the lamp seven times to force a game seven, which is, as we all know, Lundquist's territory. What, what, what to make of all of this, Pierre? Well, I think what you just said is really important, Rich. Henrik Lundqvist gives uh, the Rangers a little bit of an advantage when you think about Ben Bishop. Ben Bishop, until this year, had never played an NHL playoff game. Yes, he's won a game six on the road, and he's won a game seven uh, at home. He's also won uh, a game six at home, which really was a game seven against Montreal because they knew if they had to go back to Montreal, they were in trouble in the previous round. So he's been uh, pushed up against the wall. That being said, he doesn't have nearly the pedigree of Henrik Lundqvist. So I think just based on that, slight advantage to the Rangers going into Game 7. Yeah, and Tampa has scored six goals in the last three games. And as I mentioned, they scored six goals each in Games 2 and 3. Has Lundqvist uh, figured it out in a way? Has he gotten back on track from what you've seen, Pierre? You know what, Rich? I don't think it's just about Hank. I think it's about the whole team. For whatever reason, in Games 2 and 3, they lost their way. They lost their identity. They got away from their matchups. You know, if you go back to game one, and I've had the privilege of doing all the games in this series, if you go back to game one, one of the things the Rangers did so well is they established a matchup early on. Mark Stahl against Steven Stamkos and Dan Girardi and Ryan McDonough against the triplets line with Palat, Johnson, uh, and Kucherov. They did a really good job of that. But in two and three, for whatever reason, Rich, they got away from that. And now they found a way to get back into that method, and it's kind of worked for them. But I don't think it was all on Hank. I think it was part of the team just having major breakdowns as well. The 2013 Sports Emmy Award winner for Outstanding Sports Reporter joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show, Pierre Maguire, getting set for a Game 7 in Madison Square Garden. What makes, as you call him, Hank, uh, what makes Lundquist so good in Game 7s? Why, why does he seem to be so comfortable in that crucible, Pierre? I'm going to go to your sport that you do so well with your gang over at the NFL Network, and that is uh, the focus. And if you look at the top quarterbacks in the game, and whether it's Tom Brady or whether it's Aaron Rodgers, you guys know the same thing, Rich, as I know with hockey. The focus of the elite athlete is phenomenal. And Henrik Lundqvist's mental strength is outstanding, but his focus is phenomenal. And that's one of the reasons why I think he's able to block out all the white noise that surrounds a Game 7 and really thrive in that kind of an environment. He doesn't really communicate with anybody during a game. If you watch uh, some of his idiosyncrasies during a game, it's, it's pretty amazing uh, how little converse, uh, conversing he does with his teammates or even with his coaches or his trainers. He's in his own little world. And it works for him. It really works well for him. And obviously, then no one's going to go and bother him then, right? They, they just know, just leave him oh, in his bubble. No, you, you stay away from that fella during a game. Just don't go near him. Unless he talks to you, you don't say anything to him. Yeah, and, and, and since I'm focused, as you said, on one particular sport in many ways, uh, what you just said, should I read into it that, that the NHL officials should check the PSIs of Lundquist's <laughs> pads before Game 7, Pierre? Did I just hear that from you? Oh, uh, yeah, Pardon. exactly. That's a good point. We need to do that. We need to shrink our goalies. There's no question. Um, but that being said, you know, the one in all seriousness, Henrik Lundqvist is one of the elite players we've had in the league over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And he's made a gigantic difference for that franchise in New York. What uh, about Western Conference uh, final game number six that's coming up tonight, Pierre, intrigues you most? Chicago in an elimination game with their backs against the wall. The Ducks trying to make sure there's no game seven on their home ice coming up later this week. What intrigues you most about tonight's game six? The physical adversity that the star players have had to go through in this series is overwhelming, Rich. I mean, I've been in the league 27 years, and I've never seen star on star hitting like this. And it's been amazing to watch. It's a spectacular 
um, event. And I think tonight in Chicago, especially when you consider the fan base in Chicago and how energized they are and the proud leadership of the core in Chicago with Jonathan Taze and Brent Subrick and Duncan Keith, it's got a chance to be something really special. Now, I will say this, Anaheim is as ferocious as any team I've seen in the last five to seven years in terms of physical play, speed, and skill. They really are. So this is going to be a huge test for Chicago just to force a game seven. Yeah. But and that leadership, that leadership portion is high in Chicago it really is rich. This has been a fun series to watch, Pierre, because we've seen it all. And I know you mentioned that there's been everything going on in the Tampa and New York series and the speed of the game has been on display in that conference finals. But in, in this one, as you point out, the hitting, the star power as well on both teams and what Taves did in 72 seconds uh, to force an overtime in game five and that uh, that Chicago has yet to win a game in regulation because we've seen it all overtimes and regulation gets breaking his own points uh, his own points record for Anaheim in a playoffs this has been a lot of fun to watch Pierre. Oh, absolutely. I'm on my way there right now, so I apologize for any background noise oh, good. flying through Detroit uh, to do the game with Doc Emmerich and Eddie Olchuk tonight. But, I, you know, again, you look at it, Rich, and we have stars in the series, yes. We have guys that understand their roles, too, like Matt Bolesky and Andrew Cogliano for Anaheim. And you look on the other side, and you look at Andrew Shaw and what he's done in this series to date. Um, you look at Johnny O'Dui in this uh, series he's had on the back end. You know, Chicago's under man on the back end. Everybody knows that. But, again, I think the theater tonight out of Chicago is going to be absolutely awesome. Crystal ball it for me when the cup's on the line. I know it's we always talk because it's the cup. There's going to be one series coming up where – yeah, the cup gets handed out. When the cup's on the line, who's playing for it, Pierre? I never do that, Rich, because I have to stand between the two benches. That's true. So I'm in the middle of a, a I love pretty that. violent place, so I never pick anything publicly. Okay. So um, would you like to rhyme? Should we rhyme with ducks? Should we rhyme with rangers? <laughs> it's the strangers no. against the pucks. No. Uh, no? you're too funny. I have to tell you this. I sure. did that probably back in 2006, and one of my friends who was coaching one of the teams, I picked against this team. He said, I can't believe you'd do that. Like, I really am taking this personal. And I thought he was kidding around, and he wasn't. So ever since then, I said, you know what? I'm not picking teams publicly anymore. It's because I have to stand between the two teams when I work. So I'm just going to say no, no rhyming, no anything. Just enjoy the games. So if you're in the Detroit airport, are you, are you seeing Mike Babcock on his way to Toronto? Have you seen him walk through the airport? At all? I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't think Mike has to go commercial anymore. Rich. <laughs> I think he's, that 50 I think mil, he's that 50. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's flying private aviation with 50 mil uh, in his back pocket. I would I would imagine that uh, Mike's able to choose his own special mode of transportation. I don't think it would be from this terminal. Yeah, but, I mean, you think about it, though. I mean, uh, how many coaches last two years, let alone eight, in this league? Pierre? Uh, Mike, I mean, Mike had a phenomenal run in sure. Detroit. The 10-year run was great, and uh, it's an unbelievable opportunity. You know, I think one of the things that this does, and I know most fans don't care about it, but uh, I coached in the league for a long time, too. This really helps bring coaching salaries up to where they really should have been mm. for a while. And I, I'm really I'm proud of Mike and the stance that he took. And I've known Mike a long time. I have a lot of respect for him. Um, I like to think we're friends. And uh, the one thing that he is, he's the ultimate professional. He fit really well as a football coach. I think in, at the end of the day, he's probably more of a football coach than a hockey coach just on the way he runs things. Hey, Pierre, thanks for calling in. Can we get you back during the uh, Cups, the Cup final? You, you can. I will come on your show anytime, Rich. It's been a pleasure. And I really enjoy your work and your team's work over at the NFL Network. Thanks, Pierre. Um, and I've, I've enjoyed li li I enjoyed listening to your uh, acceptance speech at the Emmys a couple years ago. You really spoke from the heart. It was really cool to see. And you deserve it. Uh, thanks, man. I appreciate that very much. You bet. That's Pierre McGuire on his way to Chicago to broadcast tonight's Game 6 between Chicago and Anaheim here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.